Okay, guys, so uh, this is extra. Let's start. And so, as you already understand, we will talk about process. Every project, I guess, have or supposed to have. But from a little bit different perspective, I will try to give you a different view on it about soft skills when we're making code reviews. So, in other words, how to make it like a human. Um, it won't be actually very long. I know we have one, one hour and a half, but it definitely will take us least, um, less. If you wonder why I choose this topic, uh, in short, in my experience, I had some conflicts within the team with teammates when we were reviewing each other, or I was reviewing somebody, I was reviewed, and we have some small combat fights, how it's supposed to be, and so on. Also, I saw how others have some conflicts during code reviews, and it's pushed me to dive a little bit why it's happening, how to avoid such situation when we're reviewing each other. And so my motivation today is just to share what was useful for me or for our team. Possibly you will find it useful for yourself as well. So who am I? I was already introduced by Guntra. Uh, primarily, I'm Python software engineer. My primary profile is Python, but as it sometimes happens, uh, often if pro project require you to be full stack, I am full stack engineer. Okay, let's move on. Uh, that doesn't work. Now it works. What we're going to take uh, today uh, to view, a few words, why it matters, soft skills when you code review. We will talk about how to write comments in friendly way. And so not to people avoid situations when people start uh, accepting your feedback personally and something like this. How to make code review e easy in general. If as a reviewer, you have something to do. You could help with it and as a author of some change list. Again, there are things that we could improve and make it easier for our reviewer. A few words about how to deal with big PRs and how to deal with when there are many PRs, but actually these are specific things. I will just know them. If what happened in, uh, for within uh, our team, but I think it's uh, we won't stop on it much because it's not it's not general case. Not uh, it's rarely to happen, and. Some summary and your, all your questions. Um, by the way, if you will have any questions during presentation, it's okay to interrupt me. We will stop and discuss anything you, uh, you have you are in interested in. And and as I mentioned, uh, if I so you could help me if I will miss, but we will try to always check from both sides. Uh, just a reminder, as a reviewer and a author, because code review is always process of both sides. It's not, you know, only tips to those who review code, but no to uh, to author. Author also involved. Let's move on. Uh, but yes, before we'll stop, why it's crucial. Let's remind ourselves what are code review goals. What are ideas, thoughts? What do you think? To get uh, better code, better code, better maintainable code. Nice, yes, agree. And uh, to be sure that the uh, code uh, is uh, going according to um, some uh, rules and... Uh, Makes sense, yes, agree. Possibly something else. Also, team can get acquainted with some features which are pushed. Yes, so yes. Very nice point. Anything? Any other ideas? Possibly that's all. Okay. Yes, uh, I agree with you. So first, actually, Yuri mentioned keep project quality at higher enough level. I make it as a general statement. And the project quality, actually, I'm. It's not only about good quality, uh, but you know, project good. I would say uh, code quality is what we have in only in code, but project quality, if something works better, quicker, 
this maintainability and thing it's whole project benefit and it's, it's involves not only code quality but yes nice point but uh, actually you raised it one key feature also code review give us is opportunity to share knowledge and sometimes we mm, forget about this um, so oh, not forget, just uh, don't use this opportunity. For example, there are situations when um, people may work on within a team, somebody works with one service, another person with a different, another, and you know that, okay, that person never involved, was never involved in this service you are working on, and you even miss, uh, skip giving he, uh, your quote to review it by that person, but because you, assume and uh, you understand that that person actually won't be able to give you reasonable feedback on this service because the person is not aware of it it works in general but then you actually lose opportunity to share so that person will start also knowing what happens in that service why it happens and so on so these cases actually best practice would be if you always have code reviews you always share with other teammates, even if they won't work on that service, they at least will be up to date what's going on there. And in case they will be need to involve, it will be much easier for them to join you in contributing there. Um, and one more. Uh, yes. Thing. Uh, it is uh, to learn something new. Because, for example, Re uh, yes. review uh, <laughs> could uh, doesn't know something. Yes, great could point. Don't, could not know. Yes, thank you guys for contributing. Yes, and learning something new as well. And, um, but also here, so it's in case, in this case is, so one point, if you are the person and you, you understand that it's hard to somebody assign this PR to be reviewed uh, like carefully by somebody because of lack of experience in some theme, you just need to change the goal. Your goal won't be to receive very nice feedback on this PR, but your goal must be here to share knowledge. So this, the team become more experienced as well in what area you are. And from other side, if you are the author, uh, if you are a reviewer and someday you receive PR and you, you don't understand at all what's, what's, going, what's happening in this PR, possibly some, this situation might be familiar with you. You know, when some lead, uh, senior engineers on your project submits PR and you are a junior and you, oh, I don't understand a thing. I understand that this is Python code and that's he creating something, but I don't know what is it. Be proactive. Ask, like contact that person and ask that person to guide you through the PRs. Never blindly approve and hoping that there are no mistakes or I know that it's our senior engineer, he will know everything. So I hardly find something to comment there. It's not true sometimes, but the main goal is for you to, sh uh, to gain that information from PR will be. Ideally, as a reviewer, uh, sorry, as yes, as a reviewer, I'm correct. You should be able to answer on three questions, as for me. First, what is do do done in that PR? For example, you create a new endpoint on API, okay, why? So why we want to have this new endpoint? Because some client start needs to, our client start need some to grab additional information. We create new endpoint. Okay, you understand what, why, and how? How is actually uh, the final step? You were looking at PR. You see that, uh -huh, some new component was introduced, and so on. So it's just a reminder, and keep in mind that you your team will only benefit from. Uh, this sharing and oh, uh, one more thing I forgot to mention if you know that uh, you are in that position that you are senior and you submit some PR to less experienced person to junior or newcomer open a door for th this person and contact proactively and say uh, I submitted this PR give me a sign if you need uh, give, chat me if you need any overview on it. So general, not, not to guide line by line, but just give the answer on these three questions. So it will be very helpful for your reviewer. I think it's enough about goals. Let's go more, more on. Okay, let's talk, uh, let's talk about why it matters. Firstly, just a reminder, we are humans, not robots. 
and it's sometimes easy to forget because actually when review is happening, all you see is just your code in browser or whatever where you review it. And that's it. There are no person near you, especially now we are working from home. So we may forget. And uh, oh no, let's uh, wait for that. Also, uh, as for me, it could be easily compared a code review process with just feedback session. There are a lot of feedback session trainings, how to give person feedback carefully, nicely, so everyone will benefit from it, but hardly uh, see any uh, trainings how to make this feedbacks on code review. Yes, we, many things are just could be applied from uh, these techniques from feedback sessions, how to, uh, to code review, but sometimes we, even we know them, we do not apply them. And that's sometimes give us some issues during code reviews. Yes, next one. Remember again, we are evaluating and giving feedback to somebody's work. So it means that person spent time, resources, he think or he or she, so they think how it would be the best option. Even if you see, oh, come on, it looks like he, he was like, you know, spent one minute to submit this PR with box, you might be wrong. It, possibly it took hours for that person to bring this solution. So always keep in mind that and don't depreciate our, uh, somebody's work. Because otherwise people may take it personally and here it's becoming a real problem issue. Uh, when people start making it, uh, taking it personally. So people may think that, oh, I'm incompetent. Uh, people may become defensive. And if they become defensive, it's, it become really hard to them, if, if for you as a reviewer to bring some ideas, new ideas, why it's better to move, uh, make it this way or that way. And of course, review suffers and this, your, your team productivity may suffer and so on. So keep in mind also the, this point. Mm, next one, uh, code review mostly uh, happen is as a written form. And it's really, uh, you might have this misleading tone uh, because when, when you talk with people personally, okay, you, you have this, the body language, you have tone of voice and so, and so on. But when you just write, uh, read the text, it's not always clear what was in the so we, we should that's why we should uh, write it carefully because it's not always clear was it a root tone or it was friendly tone unless you specify it explicitly with how you write the comment and yes one why it matters because possibility of conflicts within a team and that's the best thing when it happens in team you become not a team when there are uh, conflicts and uh, actually, just, uh, it reminded me, we have a case in team when one of our engineers came and said, I don't want to be reviewed by that person. So for you to understand that these uh, situations may happen. And it, it sounds funny on one hand, but it doesn't sound funny for our PM and for our lead because he needs somehow to resolve it within in the team what's happening. I guess here it's clear. That's, ah, uh, one more note. Everything becomes more even crucial in case new team members joins, uh, especially if they are uh, beginners and if we work remotely. Because you may uh, actually argue here that, okay, I'm our team is best. Even we don't know, oh, we don't follow some practices, how to leave comments, how to win feedbacks, but everyone is happy. It might be true. Indeed, it's like, yes, you work for a long time, you know each other in real life or not, but in general, you are comfortable. But if a new member joins you, uh, that person might not be aware how you uh, used to perform everything. And that's okay that you, uh, you always are friendly, your tone is always friendly and so on. So just again, keep in mind. Let's move on. Uh -huh. Now let's talk about how to write comments, some suggestions. First one, never say you. So decisions you reach in, uh, in review should be based on what um, makes the code better rather than who came up with that idea. So 
highlighting that you made mistake, you something do, you do, you, it's bad practice. You should critique the quote, not the quarter. Again, otherwise that person might become defensive, might take it personally, and it brings us negative results. So you may have this harmless comment, you must spell something successfully. And here, like two options, how author may interrupt this note. First one, hey buddy, you must spell successfully, but I think you're smart. It was probably just a typo. It's good scenario, but it might be, you must spell successfully numbers. So it means you, you, it's not easily read from just comment, which tone person may give you. Honestly, I guess people very often use this second interpretation, especially if there are a lot of comments, because it's become more and more pushy. And also here, uh, and but ideally, it's just a suggestion how it could be just skipped, no need. For example, in this case, who misspelled and so on, you just, your goal is just to make it clear uh, and make it correct in your code, just show it one point what we have, how to change to this, and that's it. Person will ideally understand it and there will be no questions. Also, it's suggestion use, uh, to avoid in general all, all these typos in your code, use different plugins or set up in uh, your environments, these spell checkers and so on. Uh, it's very useful and, oops, sorry. and. Uh, you will avoid these comments, which are, might be, if it happens one comment per whole review, okay, that's fine. But if you see that, okay, this person submitted and almost you know, 10 comments regarding typos, it's not very pleasant for a reviewer to leave such comments. So give, take care of your reviewers. Uh, try to somehow prevent these situations. Many linters actually support this feature. You could even automate this text if you want to but at least use it locally. Also as a reviewer, it's good sign, make, uh, you know, write comments also grammarly correct. And here I would suggest also use some tools. And personally, I use Grammarly. Grammarly is very helpful in not only on comments, but on comments, it also works well. Let's go more on. Stop about, uh, let's, mm -hmm. uh -huh. we could replace you with we or use passive voice. It may sound uh, funny, uh, for example, as on this picture, we should really move that coach, but actually the author, this, in this case is dog, should move that coach. And we understand this, but when you, uh, we like reinforces the team uh, collective's responsibility for that code, that not somebody is responsible for that and that's it. We like unite you with your author and it's much better to follow this. For example, you, can you rename this variable to something more descriptive compared to, can we rename this variable to something more descriptive? Or you could avoid in, uh, in general this and just make it an input passive voice construction. This variable should be renamed or could be renamed to more descriptive. There are different ways, but I, uh, I guess the idea is clear. Let's move on. Uh -huh. Here, you, we should uh, make a request, uh, but not command. It also, I saw this uh, when I, I know, seeing different, uh, how team, in different teams, uh, people uh, command. And indeed, it's not very pleasant to receive, uh, you know, just somebody makes, look at your code and leave you a lot of commands what to do. Even though, yes, you're supposed to do it, it's not the tone, it makes you feel not well. Oh, not that bad, but, but you definitely won't enjoy it. Uh, but if you make it as a request, it's much simpler. It's like somebody is going to kitchen, you don't, uh, hey, oh, you may say some command, bring me that, bring me uh, that or that, but mostly we ask to bring something. And here, actually, the same rule is uh, applied. Um, so one example, move somebody, move the full class to separate file and set better option, can we move something to a different place? Also, when you form this way, uh, it's much easier, you know, for author to push something 
back politely because you as a reviewer won't be always right possibly author like know it better and just you need he needs just again to convey you that his solution is better but in case first one in first scenario if reviewer give you a command the author also may start you know uh, defending i don't want to do that because then there's not someone um, while if you make it as a request it's it might be much more easier for author to also reply you yes we could but then i have checked it's better this way or this way because and so on and you could even make it uh, as a question so then to receive good information yes it uh, reviewer agreed with you hopefully hopefully it makes sense Let's move on. Uh -huh. The very crucial thing is for me, we should like ground your notes in uh, to principle to principle sums. Uh, like first, sorry, uh, this uh, you should follow some principles, not opinions, in terms like uh, to to build your uh, code review conversation in constructive way. If you make a statement, okay, I think it's better this way, well, the, the author thinks another way. And you will never, you may reach some agreement, but honestly, the start is awful when I think this way and you think this way without any uh, reasoning. It's, it always will give you one and additional rounds in this conversation. Author always should understand why reviewer suggestion is better. Uh, just why it's better and some give you some insight for example we should split this class into two well also may read it and okay but why should we split it i see no reasoning for that and if he will answer or she that i don't make think it makes sense then again next round will start but ideally how it may look you just as a reviewer when you were uh, supposed to write this comment you have something more than just why we should uh, actually you wrote we should something to do but i think in, in most cases you have some idea why because it's easier to maintain so on in this example you ex you explain okay this class have more responsibilities than uh, it's supposed to be we are not following single responsibility principle that's why it makes sense to split it in two and then for author it's makes clear even if author will disagree the author should bring something instead okay like we are not following this principle but we are following something else and it's possibly this is more crucial for us than following single responsibility and then this is very constructive uh, discussion otherwise you may go uh, you may come to nowhere also it's a good sign um, good practice to leave some references if you refer to something for example do, uh, any links to documentation where it's if you um, you know you may suggest uh, use some function because it's best practice and then you could leave a link that in documentation is stated it's better to use this approach than that because so you don't need to copy that you just could person to link but to the correct uh, location so a person could uh, be familiar uh, get familiar with uh, that suggestion it could be even links to Stack Overflow, but keep in mind that these uh, links should be, these questions on Stack Overflow and answers should be really popular and upvoted, not something that one person asked and another person re replied. It's not very authoritative. That's more. Uh -huh. Sometimes actually you see that something smells to you, but it's hard for you to make uh, that reasoning we are talking we were talking about on previous slide it may happen but then just do your best with uh, a explaining if you can and uh, when you leave a comment leave it without judgment uh, sorry i wrong wrong direction so you may write this is confusing but this statement states that this is confusing for everyone uh, for example, some piece of code is commented uh, while 
actually it's, it would be better to say, I found this uh, hard to understand and so on. The difference is that in first statement, again, you like make a general statement, on second statement, you make your, you shared your opinion. It doesn't, uh, you doesn't say that, okay, for everyone, it will be unclear, but for me, it's not clear. And here also may think, okay, is it, does it make sense to restructure your code? Because possibly all others also will think that way that it's confusing, or it's only that person because he's not familiar, he or she is not familiar with something. And I just need somehow, you know, to share, uh, to, to share some knowledge with him and he will be okay with it. So second approach is preferable in this case. Let's move on. And the thing I really like when it's happening during code review, be generous with code examples. Honestly, I have learned many things about JavaScript when I was not a JavaScript developer, thankfully, to good uh, reviewers, which leave a lot of examples where, where uh, it makes sense uh, to me. And, oh, I, this is how it could be simplified, or this is how it uh, could be, you know, work better. It really helps. For example, on this case, you see that hmm, somebody uh, haven't used list comprehension while it's pretty good to use it here. So you could just leave a comment could you, could, can we simplify this with the list comprehension? But if that person actually won't, have never heard about list comprehensions, it may happen, or that person knows what is how this functionality, but just forget that it's um, named this way, it makes some difficulties for that person. Oh, I need to Google it, something. It mostly possibly happen, will happen with some um, juniors, but anyway, it may happen in for all others as well much better and quicker for a reviewer, uh, for, uh, sorry, author, will be if you provide immediately quick example, even if that person won't know what is list comprehension, but from that example, that person uh, will understand, ah, what is it, that, that's it, and just mm, fix it. And actually, it's uh, very appreciated by authors when the reviewers spend it, because it's like you understand that that person not just give you a short comment, it gives you a comment, it gives you an example, and you understand, wow, that person really cares and helps me, and you will only appreciate that work. Mm. Okay, let's move on here. I guess also it's clear. Ah, but not too much. Uh, uh, what do I mean? Uh, I mean, it's if you will start giving examples on every line of code, it's bad practice. It's because it's like another side that person may think, oh, I, I'm capable to write code on my own. You shouldn't uh, give me example on each thing you ask me to change or improve. So be reasonable when it makes sense and when it's not. Um, another situation may happen, which may happen during code reviews is, uh, for example, you see, okay, that person forget to write doc string in some set of functions and you agree to have uh, doc strings for every, uh, every, always. And you have two approaches. One would be for each function where this person missed doc string, you will leave a comment, please add max, uh, please doc, oh, just miss doc string, miss doc string. But you could make it simpler, just leave one comment, but uh, mark it that it's not only here, but here and all child classes actually uh, um, have missing doc stream. So, and you leave one comment and again, person also won't feel that you leave 100 million uh, comments because uh, sometimes it's dissatisfied them. So. Um, okay, thanks again. Yes, there are risks that uh, also will miss what you have meant and just, uh, fix only this one comment, but this, I guess this risk is less than, you know, bring, uh, li leaving 10 comments and uh, hope that author will uh, be happy with uh, all these uh, comments. And actually it's easier for you to leave in one place. Let's move on. One thing that I'm very often uh, like to, I, uh, to disobey the rule, it's respect the scope of review. 
I see that example that somebody named the variable eight, but assigned nine, it's a little bit confusing. But actually author, which submits you some change list, they doesn't change anything on that line. So it's possible, even if this line is were some time ago authored by this the person, currently your review is out of scope for current review. And you shouldn't uh, like insist, or you could even not leave any comments on out of scope things. Yes, you may leave, but if you leave, uh, it's very helpful to make it clear that it's out of scope and it's optional. You cannot demand something which is out of scope. Yes, but you could still ask and like make it, if it won't require a lot of changes, please, uh, could you please some, to do so, uh, rename it uh, how it's supposed to be? Because uh, why it's a bad practice? Because sometimes we can underestimate how many changes you will need to rename one variable. Possibly it's only in this file, but possibly it will, you know, trigger a lot of changes and it will take your reviewer um, more, more, more time and possibly there are risks that uh, the reviewer, uh, sorry, not review, author, author will bring some new bugs and if you will start giving, giving him or her feedbacks on something which is out of scope because he introduced bugs, uh, some new bugs because of your out of scope comment, well, it's, make, it's definitely the best, uh, worst scenario which may lead to this out of scope comment. So be careful with it. And some, uh, sometimes uh, regarding this uh, in brackets, uh, different, uh, different uh, notes, uh, uh, I really like when, for example, you leave a really tiny comment how something could be changed. Again, you could use this technique and add in, in brackets that it's, you are just nitpicking, like nitpick and then a comment. And that person will understand, oh, it's like person understand that it's really small thing, but it bothers somebody, possibly I will fix it. But again, I, uh, that uh, author understand that it's, it's optional. Um, yes, think, thanks, that's all on this section. Let's move on. May I put a question? Sorry. Yes, please. Um, if we have some important, like, thing out of scope, uh, basically, reviewer found a bug and we should fix it, can we ask to, like, fix it in another pull request, like, to create a fix in, with uh, another scope, with that out of scope stuff? Uh, yes, so in, it's it's the best the best way how to handle such situation. You saw something which was not discovered earlier. You create a new task, a new bug, and you have a separate PR. And then this PR is not blocked, but you and actually the same author of this PR may open the second one and improve something what you have discovered, but not in the same scope. Ideally, unless as I mentioned, unless you see it's really easy to do and you're sure that it won't trigger some changes in a lot of files. Uh, so yes, as I mentioned, you could leave this comment optional, but if it's critical, it's worth move it to as a separate task in separate merge request. Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah. thank you. Uh, I was asking... mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I was asking about like require uh, or like critical fix, which we should do. <laughs> If it's very critical, yes, you could, uh, again, even if it's very critical, if this task is completed, move it and oh, it's better to open separate PR. Okay, I got, thank you. Uh, but uh, uh, do you think, is it okay? If it is okay uh, to, for example, to, if we have a critical, uh, some critical out of scope uh, issue, Mm -hmm. to create a new issue by uh, by myself for example and uh, uh, to inform in in the comment uh, that here opened a new issue because uh, author uh, could think oh he opened uh, without my uh, not permission i mean uh, without discussion without uh, but it depends like who discovered it and um, you know, which, which processes you have on the project. For example, uh, sometimes I, uh, it's, you remind me what you could also do. 
um, I'm as an author, I see, okay, I see that something is badly happened here on some code, which I actually am not uh, working on in current uh, task, in current PR, but I understand that it's worth fixing. I will leave a comment like to do, create a ticket and in that to do, I will, uh, next to that to do, I will put that ticket. So, and reviewer also will see it. So everyone will be informed. It's another way. If you understand that it's not that critical, but this to do is worth having, just leave them. And then you will have some, you know, triage of your to do's and you will take it in the next uh, sprints, whatever you have. Have I answered? Uh, uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So be like reasonable what uh, you demand and uh, based on project requirements, needs, and cr how critical something you have found. But here we're talking about more general case. Generally, it's out of scope thing, definitely at least optional. And you shouldn't, you should better open a different PRs for that. And part I really enjoy and I very rarely, 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 rarely see uh, uh, from our engineers, our, I mean, Ukrainian or some, because from US team, when we were working with US team, they very often uh, leave uh, some comments which actually do not criticize you, but vice versa. They will like praise you. For example, oh, I wasn't aware of this API. That's really useful that you use it, or you, you show. I now I also as a reviewer know that it uh, exists. Or somebody have a really nice solution to something, and you as a reviewer thought that it will be solved in different way. But now you saw, oh, this is even better than I thought. Why not to leave a comment? Why not to give your author that feedback that his um, recognize his efforts that it was uh, nice to review this piece of code. Oh, again, there's another example, the person breaks something uh, to the smaller function. Okay, it's, it's simpler now. So, oh, also, uh, you, if person makes some by author, um, but if from his own or her own initiative, make something out of scope and fix something which actually is not in scope of this task, it's also worth uh, recognizing it. Okay, thank you for fixing that was that old thing or refactor something which was awful for a very long time. It also makes sense uh, to, to praise. Definitely not to uh, over try with these praises because if too much, it, it will uh, make it less valuable. Uh, like if person open PR and every PR you, oh, nice job, nice job. Well, I personally, I it's like it loses that value when you make some uh, good call, good callouts. So, if you haven't practiced this com type of comments, I think you should start. It's really I I enjoy them. Let's move. Uh, uh -huh. This about more to um, authors give feedbacks, like graciously uh, accept critics, show gratitude to the, your reviewer that, oh, thank you that uh, you discovered something. Not just, oh, wow, okay, I will do that, but with that intention and uh, tone that you are bothered with his comments. Vice versa, give him that nice feedback back that to your reviewer and you, you actually reviewer will feel more comfortable that because mm, they will understand oh that person accepts uh, calmly and even grateful to my comments and it's then uh, reviewer is not under pressure that oh i'm leaving again comment to that uh, author and uh, he may start thinking that i do it intentionally because i don't like him or feedback back to that uh, person. Sorry, my internet. Uh, sorry. Um, so I, uh, give gratitude to your reviewer. That's, that's the thing in this, on this slide. Let's move on. Um, okay, it's, I guess, regarding comments, 
that's all, we will now talk a little bit how to make it simpler in general. Some topics actually you'll definitely be aware of. Mm. So first of all, automate what, what could, could be automated. But uh, here it's not, not ideally it's to make it easier for as a review, code review, and for your reviewer, not uh, as local uh, Git hooks, but on CI, because reviewer, uh, you, you as an author may skip this, and when it comes to review, author, uh, sorry, reviewer won't have clear understanding that you haven't passed uh, these Git hooks, while on CI, everything is clear, and you will see, okay, all, every, all your checks have passed or not. So ideally, is it to have code analysis and code formatters plus minimum score. It's like, I want to highlight, stress it, that if tool uh, you are using uh, supports these um, minimum scores, use them, for example, because if you just have PyLint, right? Uh, it has some scores, uh, it's have scoring. And if you have no minimum score, then reviewer, when it receives a PR, it, uh, he or she should either go to these logs and check that is the score higher or uh, below, now higher or less than it was before. While if you set min score, pipeline just fail, and then there will be no need to manually check in is, is it uh, become worse or not. The same with tests, set minimum coverage, and e, I suggest keep these scores at maximum. So if currently you have 60% of coverage, put the minimum score to 60%. And if any change will decrease that coverage, you will easily identify that, oh, these changes have decreased coverage because you forget to write some test. Otherwise, you may forget to write it and nobody will discover it. Like, you may miss that. Automate build process succeeds, so you have more confid uh, confident. You become more confident that everything will work when you deploy something. Also, it was useful. Uh, we have on one project integration with Jira. We even when click submit a, a merge PR tickets were automatically moved to the next statuses, and you just not bothered with Jira at all. And it was really nice experience. Yes, it requires some def some. Customiz not customization, but setup, uh, setuping. Not every project could have this, but it's useful if you have opportunity to have it. It's again, something that makes you as a reviewer, uh, e your life easier. And you could also add any other checks which could make sense to your project. Conventional commits, naming, whatever, everything makes sense. Um, if you have, um, I know, some re repetitive discussions on code review, then it's a sign for you that possibly you need to, uh, de to develop your own guidelines, your project guidelines. For example, um, it's from our, uh, my experience within our team, we have very often discussions which, what we should use like uh, more functional approach or, uh, or non-functional like writing loops just for something or better to use some specialized uh, functions and iterate over uh, arrays with these functions instead of writing your own loops. Actually, both options works nice, but we have discussion because somebody preferred this way, another person preferred this way. And at some point we, okay, we just need to agree what and stick to one approach. And because it's much easier to maintain when we follow one pattern. And then, we, we sit, we develop these guidelines, not only about this functional and functional approaches, but whatever it, mm, other topics might be, but it uh, just make, possibly makes sense to you if you have some repetitive discussions. Mm, some obvious thing, but sometimes people ignore them, set limitations on repository according to your agreements. So min count of approvals, merge strategy, if you have, a uh, match strategy is always should be rebased. So disallow match commits in, in uh, most, uh, most like GitHub, GitLab repositories uh, allow you to do that. Uh, disallow who allowed to match and who not. Personally, I, I, I remember when I twice per day merged PRs instead of approving it because uh, 
there were no means mean approvals um, uh, configuration and I accidentally instead of clicking approve somehow click again green button merge and it it was not a pleasant experience when you merge something which was not supposed to be merged um, and also we find it's useful it dep depends uh, of your needs but um, many these GitLab, GitHub's other systems allow you to have labels, to have assignees, reviewers, fields, and they actually really helpful. Might be, oh, sorry, I missed something. Uh -huh. I will show uh, regarding this labels after. One more thing, establish time window in which code, code review should happen. For example, we have a rule, uh, we had a rule uh, on previous project that should review at least one round should happen within 24 hours after uh, PR was submitted. We uh, don't want to people make like on that project we agreed. So people are not forced to immediately jump on reviewing because you may work on your uh, on your task and it's a little bit dis destructive when you should switch immediately to something else and then it's possibly hard to again renew your work. So you have 24 hours to make that review and you if you will miss it today, you know that in the morning you will start with reviewing or oh, in the evening. So, but this um, prevents you from situation when you submit review and it could be reviewed for one week for some, with, for, for, uh, by your reviewer. It's not again, best practice, better to have some um, conventional time uh, windows. And regarding these labels, for example, how it may look if you have many PRs assigned to you, and here it's all my PRs are closed because it was end of the sprint. But in general, during uh, active development, actually you may have a list of many PRs. And if you we were using like pending merge, needs merge, in progress uh, labels, they were helpful because I just navigate to my PRs as, a, as where I was assigned or created, and I understand. Okay, two PRs already could be merged, even if it's one task, but like uh, one and but one uh, another. Uh, PR to different repository in the scope of the same task, I need, uh, it still needs to be reviewed and so on. You have clear picture or something is in progress. It means that, oh, I need to fix something here because I receive a comment and the reviewer push it back to me in progress. Oops. Sorry, are those labels uh, manually assigned or is it automated? Uh, currently, uh, and these one are manually assigned. So we, Yes, by reviewer or by author, when you open PR, I manually uh, always add label needs review, and then it becomes visible to my reviewer in the same list that, okay, this PR needs to be reviewed by you. If you, for example, navigate to review requests section, you will see all PRs and they might be in either needs review label or in progress. In progress, I, I mean, I understand that I have leave uh, that person some feedbacks and I, for now, I could ignore this PR even, uh, even though I am, uh, set as a reviewer for that PR, but I understand the state of this PR is not ready to be reviewed again. But manual, I think possibly it could be automated, but for now, I, I haven't checked. For now, it was like manual thing. It become uh, helpful if you have a lot of reviews or a lot of PRs, uh, which needs to be somehow tracked. Because it's one, two, okay, it possibly doesn't make sense to you, but if there are a lot of PRs, it become more friendly to you if you have such dashboards uh, with labels. Thank you. Okay, let's move on. And next one, let's uh, let's quickly discuss how from how we could make as an author for reviewer easy easier to review your code. First one, which many people I guess don't do or rarely do. But it's my assumption. Possibly you, you could give me your feedback. Uh, review yourself because before clicking submit PR, but not in your um, environment where you develop in your uh, code editors, whatever it is. But on that, uh, but mostly on that, is it GitHub, GitLab, in browser? Because there, it's your your code is highlighted in different way, and when it's um, because when you work in your idea, you used to these colors and you just possibly somehow uh, 
start missing that you have commented some piece of code and you forget about it while you look at your code like from different with different coloring like where it's green or red so whatever it could be other colors it helps you to identify quickly oh i forgot to do that or this or oh it's strange that i have added this line even though i i was not supposed to very good uh, tip suggestion and really helpful i many times find things which actually were if discovered even before submitting thankfully to this first step review yourself before submitting but not in your code editor well obvious thing but sometimes happens do not assign for review prs with failed checks if you have automated checks and you see that some automated checks fails possibly you see it not immediately because sometimes we assign pr and then work to some on something else but very often we receive emails notifications oh your pipeline failed or any other sign just be sure that all fail uh, nothing failed in your checks and if it fails put it back from the review so reviewer won't be bothered that oh you submit pr with failed checks with failed tests or linter uh, linters some code formatting and uh, again take care of your code reviewer um again good practice is to reply to every reviewer's comment even if it was discussed offline sometimes it happens that you you as a reviewer leave a comment then also i know chat to you not in uh, that repository but or you meet offline and you discuss okay yes indeed your comment makes sense or it doesn't make sense i will do it different way but that discussion happened outside the repository and if there would be another reviewer a second reviewer because sometimes we have more than one reviewer and uh, that review will see that unresolved comment so it's uh, they will see this you leave a comment but no reaction it uh, may might be confusing have you fixed it if you haven't why not and so on even so duplicate always if you have something discussed offline and put it back to the repository so every next person will understand uh, how it was resolved also some notes like this rule uh, sometimes might be i would say to extra like because if somebody make you a comment with a typo you could possibly not uh, reply to a whole thank you you could just uh, all many systems uh, allows you to give a smile thumbs up and it will be also enough it's some reaction to your comment and you understand that person saw it First of all, it's a sign that the person also saw it, your comment, and somehow reacted, fixed, and or disagree, and then leave comment, whatever. Um, uh -huh. Nice, uh, also practice. I rarely see people do, but I enjoy it as well. Leave comments to your, uh, to your PRs as an author. For example, I work on that PR, and I understand there are some places in my code I have doubts. I, I like considering two options there. I stick to this one for now, but possibly the other one is better. So I'm doubting. Bring it to reviewer. Give it, comment yourself there, this piece of code. And then for reviewer, you, it will attract your attention, reviewer's attention, and will help for reviewer to you know, concentrate deeply, more deeply on that piece. And oh yes, it makes sense to you, so no worries. Or yes, this second approach uh, sounds to me more uh, like better than uh, than you have implemented now. Or in general, it just helps. Sometimes it's one uh, one option when you could leave comments to your PR. Another option when we could leave it uh, if you want to help your reviewer understand changes. You may leave okay this scope of changes. So you just leave a general comment below. Like here, we in general, I know, performing validation. Eh? There are some piece of code, big piece of code, and then uh, the reviewer will scroll it, and it will be easier. Remember uh, what we started before. Sometimes review hard. It's hard for reviewer to understand easily some changes because of lack of experience. So you could help with these comments as well. Next one. Uh -huh. Actually, this is something I already told. So if you know for your reviewer is mm, hard, leave helpful comments. 
and also I practice we were practicing within a team if you like always like you know I, I name it open the door for your uh, reviewer give him possibility to reach you propose some short call over review call and give them insights on your changes and it most cases it's make your code review process quicker than reviewable by on its own uh, understand every change uh, you have done in uh, code in in your code base and some tips for authors oh as a, for, uh, how to make it easier for author so by reviewer uh, first one check previous reviewers comment to avoid duplication uh, or resuming already resolved discussion because again if you have more than two reviewers and uh, you come can uh, come to review as a second reviewer you you may see that there are some comments if you will ignore them and just again check check start checking code leaving comments it may happen that you leave the same comment or almost the same as previous reviewer on which author actually already replied and um, and like they they agreed that it's better as author already did so to avoid this situation makes sense to uh, review previous commenting. Also, you could avoid additional round of review in case you see that actually everything fine, only minor trivial things left to be fixed. It's as, uh, in most cases it's okay to approve and but leaving these comments and then also without uh, just fix them and is able to merge uh, his or her changes. No need in you know assigning to you and you will just click approve button and so on. It's small tip, but something very useful. And it, again, avoiding additional rounds always uh, makes, cheers up your, uh, your author. Um, uh -huh. all, another suggestion is submit all the real comments at once instead of comment by comment. Uh, most, again, GitLab, GitHub definitely supports this. I'm not sure I haven't uh, used for a long time other systems, but you could now submit, you can leave a lot of comments and then submit finally all of them, but they, uh, so they will become visible to your um, author immediately at once. Otherwise it was happening uh, in our team sometimes, if the person is really proactive, it opens PR and you start commenting first comment, you made it second um, and, during that time that uh, author already starts replying to your comments, possibly something fixing, but you haven't finished actually your review. And to avoid this situation, make it uh, your comments immediately at once, all of them. Um, uh -huh. Very short, how to deal with big PRs. You see this screen, 1,000 some lines, and once some refactoring task, uh, 14 commits not a file change 69, bad practice. How to avoid, like ideally avoid if possible, take care again of your reviews. Do not submit such huge PRs to anybody. It's hard to review these things. So, and if, as, a, as it's also as an author and a reviewer, you may ask yourself, does this PR actually solve one thing or it actually could be split it and merge one by one because there are different things in most cases a very big PRs could be split in in smaller one and it's easier to review and everybody is happier if not okay then you one approach how to deal with this you could split your changes carefully by commits so you should when you are an author and you creating these commits you should think the way okay for reviewer, it should be easy to uh, one by one. First commit, okay, makes sense. Second one and so on. For example, we may have some changes and then we, uh, in a separate commit, it's easy example, it, but it might be more complicated. Uh, you made in one commit changes to your code and another one, you cover these changes with test and do not mix it. it so person firstly review one part and then fully review on the test. And if, uh, at some point you understand you create already these two commits and you understand oh i i during working on tests you understand uh, that i need to fix something in not in test but in my functionality which is tested 
fix it in scope of first commit, not uh, in scope of test. Otherwise, when you reviewer will review commit by commit, review will see, oh, you have some error, but your reviewer doesn't uh, know that it will be fixed in next commit. So that's why it's a little bit tricky. Uh, it's not always easy to maintain such commit history easily for a reviewer to review by commit by commit. That's why it's better to avoid such situation. But if you need to, okay, then do your best with this, with uh, the splitting. And again, very specific case, how to deal with many PRs, but I will share it briefly because in our team, it it happened and we need somehow to resolve it. Possibly if you will have some experience, you will also, you will possibly use it. So the main issue here we have on our project was our reviewers were overloaded because, so, so for your understanding, we may have at once opened 100 PRs to our repository. So if you go to navigate to PRs, you will see 100 PRs. It's, and team was like 15 people or even more engineers. And our reviewers were overloaded by these PRs because we have fixed steps which reviewers is supposed to do on our project. And it takes time. It was, even if it was easy fix, these steps to do it, it takes time. And how we resolve it. First, we get, or you could measure how many open PRs or finished tasks per person uh, you have. Second step would be like create, we created some like a table and assign dedicated reviewers to each um, person. So we have 15 people and all of them have uh, two reviewers and they were like stable for them. And we, based on that matrix, which we measured, we calculated that every reviewer supposed in general, in average have the same code reviewers per day or per some period of time. Um, and even and the main issue was we have some top performers which may you know create four PRs per day, and the, those people who review those uh, top performers where they suffer. And then we agreed that top performers should assign first review order order reviews to one reviewer and even reviews to another one. It sounds sounds a little bit as I mentioned complicated and it's very specific was to our project needs but it helped. So on that moment, we have implemented these two, like this matrix who should be reviewed by whom. Uh, in average, people start uh, less suffering that they haven't reviewed their peers, uh, PRs uh, all day. Very, it was very helpful of these labels, as I mentioned, because so many PRs, and if you need somehow navigate between them, understand which situation you have, labels were very helpful. And again, time window that we have agreed should be followed. Otherwise, it might be some unpredictable results with this amount of code reuse. Okay, that's very specific case. I just briefly share. Uh -huh, that's all actually. So as a summary, Remember that actually code review is like feedback session and make it like a human, not robot. Take care of each other. It's your teammates. Automation is your best friend during code review. Spend some time, but make it as much as, as uh, so cover it with automation as much as you can, and it will make your life definitely easier. Cooperate as a, as a team during code review instead of combating, if you feel that something became in that tone that you start defense, attack, combat, like this combat happening, like catch your, uh, catch that situation and try immediately to somehow relax it, resolve it. Otherwise it may become really unpleasant. Uh, may, you, you may, uh, it may lead to unpleasant consequences. And be agile with this process, code review, I mean. Uh, because actually it's a process and you should customize it to your needs, to your project needs. All of these suggestions I have today covered, they are just suggestions, but what should be applied, what should not, depends on your project needs, on your team composition and so on. Be agile. And here I, you have, if you need three uh, good articles, actually main, I, they are main source of today's uh, 
presentation you could read it as well and you'll share you'll you will receive some materials from our session and and that's it any questions <laughs>